Hello friends, welcome to You Know. Ha on developing countries along the ocean catching unprepared marine life and communities off guard with sudden climate changes. However, ELO is not a standalone occurrence. It is just one phase of a larger climate phenomenon called the El Nino Southern Oscillation, ENSO. This cycle encompasses two other phases, La Nina, the opposite of El Nino, and a neutral state with no predominant influence. La Nina, meaning girly in Spanish, represents a weather phenomenon causing cooling rather than heating of ocean waters. This phase brings consequences such as intense rainstorms, floods, and stronger hurricane seasons, particularly affecting countries like the United States and Canada. Both El Nino and La Nina are challenging to predict, occurring irregularly every two to seven years and lasting for extended periods. El Nino spans about nine to twelve months, while La Nina typically lasts one to three years. Understanding the formation of these phenomena requires considering the unusual process in the Pacific Ocean. Under normal conditions, trade winds move warm water toward Asian countries and Australia, leading to upwelling along the coast of South America. This process enriches the water with nutrients and supports fish populations. Disrupting this balance triggers El Nino or La Nina. During El Nino, Weakened winds allow water to heat up, causing widespread weather changes. Conversely, La Nina strengthens winds, leading to cooling and altered weather patterns. The consequences are profound, affecting regions bordering the Pacific Ocean the most. Historical records show devastating impacts on India, China, and Brazil in the 19th century, with 30 to 60 million people perishing due to severe droughts and floods in the 20th century. El Nino events significantly impacted Western countries' harvests and animal populations. South American nations like Peru and Ecuador, heavily reliant on fish and fertilizer exports, suffer economic setbacks due to El Nino. Decreased upwelling leads to mass fish kills and crop damage, affecting civilian infrastructure. Simultaneously, eastern regions like Indonesia and Australia face droughts, causing water bodies and crops to dry up negatively impacting health and living standards. African eastern countries such as Kenya and Tanzania endure frequent rains, while south-central countries like Zambia and Mozambique experience drought. In the United States, Texas faces increased precipitation during El Nino, while California benefits from rain, positively impacting crop harvests like lime and avocado. Even Canadian winters experience milder conditions. Remarkably, El Nino's influence extends to Antarctica, where the western part experiences slight warming, leading to increased snowfall and shelf glacier melting due to reduced upwelling. On the contrary, La Nina plays a crucial role in augmenting the mass of glacier, contributing to the overall balance. The direct impact of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, ENSO, on European countries is challenging to document. El Nino introduces cold and dry winters to the European continent, posing potential harm to the land. For instance, in the 18th century, El Nino significantly affected the harvests of European countries, possibly contributing to the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789. As early as the 19th century, this phenomenon caused three severe famines in various Asian and European countries. El Nino and La Nina merge as perilous phenomena for our world. The most recent occurrences of El Nino and La Nina were observed in 2015 and 2016, nearly seven years ago. In 2016, recorded as the hottest year, it marked the most severe El Nino episode in the last 50 years, leading to hunger for over 60 million people. In 2015, equatorial waters remained warmer than usual throughout the year, with the central part of the ocean peaking at almost 37.4 degrees Fahrenheit in November and an overall warming temperature of 30.5 degrees Fahrenheit, a likely record value since 1860. The impacts were felt on all continents, whether directly or indirectly. Australia, for instance, faced severe droughts, particularly in its eastern and northern parts, triggering an early start to the fire season with a total of 125 fires. The fires wreaked havoc on nature in Tasmania, including rainforests and swamps unaccustomed to such events. Additionally, this period witnessed the worst coral bleaching, making corals highly susceptible to death. The spring and fall of 2016 in Australia were among the driest on record, significantly affecting harvests. 
the heat also reduced supplies of ore, a majorly exported commodity. Asian regions experienced varying weather conditions, with severe drought affecting 85% of the Philippines. In Indonesia, large-scale fires erupted, worsening air quality in neighboring areas, including Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. These fires also impacted the export of palm oil, leading to higher prices for the product and consequently all foods using the oil. Furthermore, rice production in Vietnam and Thailand significantly declined due to water shortages. India reduced its supplies of rice, sugar, cotton, and corn. Northern regions of China suffered from droughts, while southern regions were affected by rain and floods. South America experienced severe weather-related disasters in all regions in 2016. Peru, for example, faced severe flooding and landslides, displacing about 5,000 people and reducing shrimp production. Over 150,000 people had to be evacuated from flooded areas in Paraguay, Brazil, Argentina, and others. Argentina experienced one of the largest locust infestations, severely impacting agriculture. To add to these challenges, the return of rains in April 2016 led to famine in Colombia, with approximately 2.3 million people requiring humanitarian aid. According to the UN, in the Caribbean, a scarcity of drinking water prompted St. Lucia to declare a state of emergency. The impact of El Nino in Brazil had diverse effects, causing a significant surge in global coffee and sugar prices. However, the United States and European countries by and large experienced minimal direct repercussions from El Nino. States like Missouri, Mississippi, and the United Kingdom received above-average precipitation with no substantial impact on their economies. Conversely, the African continent faced economic challenges due to El Nino. South Africa witnessed a decline in food production by 6 million tons, and parts of Zimbabwe suffered a 75% loss in harvest. Ethiopia, in particular, required humanitarian aid for 10 million people, with 458,000 children treated for acute malnutrition. The global total amounted to 60 million people grappling with hunger. Additionally, unfavorable weather events triggered disease outbreaks, notably in Africa and South America. The Zika virus spread in South America due to floods, and Africa experienced outbreaks of Rift Valley fever and malaria. El Nino adversely affected animal populations, leading to increased invasive species like locusts and tree frogs, causing crop damage and the spread of diseases. The gravity of the danger posed by El Nino and La Nina should not be underestimated. Meteorologists are currently observing signs of an impending El Nino, likely to commence in late summer 2023 or early 2024. According to Diana Meyer from the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration and Peter Talies, the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, the upcoming year may witness new global temperature records. The prolonged La Nina period lasting three years until March has accumulated significant heat energy in the ocean. After this cold snap, the release of stored heat is anticipated to intensify the effects of El Nino. While it remains uncertain if the 2015-16 scenario will repeat itself, projections indicate potential consequences for global weather. Trasa Castro, a climate science candidate, outlines four potential outcomes for 2023-2024. First, ocean temperatures could rise to 35 degrees Fahrenheit, possibly exceeding peak temperatures seen in 2015-16. Second, Australia after a period of La Nina-induced rainfall, may face an increased risk of fires due to rising temperatures. Third, South America could witness a recurrence of humanitarian crises and disease outbreaks. Fourth, Northern Europe may experience cold, dry winters, while Southern Europe may encounter heightened precipitation during El Nino. Access to food and drinking water becomes more challenging, impacting various regions globally. Countries like Australia, Brazil, Peru, and those in Africa may face severe food and economic crises, potentially leading to a decline in exports of agricultural, livestock, mining, and fuel products, with indirect repercussions on the global economy. Dartmouth University researchers estimate that the economic impact of these phenomena could cost the world approximately $3.4 trillion over the next five years. 
the latter half of 2023 and the following year may prove exceptionally challenging for the world. Looking ahead, there is a possibility that El Nino and La Nina could become more severe and frequent, potentially disrupting the force of tropical forests. The increasing impact of these weather events is exacerbated by greenhouse gas emissions, contributing to rising global temperatures. Consequently, long-term expectations suggest that high global temperatures may persist and continue to escalate, posing an even greater threat to the world. The potential deterioration of the planet's weather situation serves as a stark signal, emphasizing the imperative for environmental care to mitigate catastrophic consequences.